dance for joy Welcome to Sensible Secondhand Classics, the uh, show where we look at cars that are over 15 years old, which you can buy for a budget of between one and five thousand pounds. This is a 1993 Mercedes-Benz 220CE, otherwise known as the C124 generation of this coupe style. Later on, this would be called the uh, E-Class after a face in 1994 but uh, is it any good should you care let's find out shall we so the W124 series of Mercedes Benzes were released in 1985 following on from W123 now they were called various things, um, anything from the 200 up to the 500E for the standard saloon version was known as the W124. There was also this C124 type, after that um, comes the Cabriolet, the A124, the Estate is the S124, the station wagon, and uh, then we've got weird things like the limousine which is the uh, V124. The VF124, which is the uh, really long wheelbase one, and then the rolling chassis, that's the VF124 as well. I can see why Mercedes Benz should decide to simplify their model kind of <laughs> lineup in terms of the names because it is a bit confusing. So, most people say W124 when referring to the range as a whole, um, or you, or that just refers to the saloon, it just sort of really depends. This particular car has a 2.2 M111 engine, which generates around 148 horsepower. It's a very strange kind of hybrid of the sort of old and new. It, it, it doesn't quite look like the sort of earlier ones, of these, which came out in 1987, but it doesn't quite look like the very late ones, which were badged as the you know, so we call the E220 Coupe from 1994. The driver's airbag in this one as well. So it's a bit of a kind of um, crossover variant of this car. But uh, nevertheless, I, I quite like it. One thing this car is not, it's fast. It's, it's, it's really, not very fast. Um, it might have 148 horsepower, but <laughs> really, you don't want to be um, you don't want to be doing any races in this. It's not going to go very well. <laughs> Apologies for the background noise, uh, viewers. It's funny, less than a year after this car was uh, made, the uh, E-Class facelift came out and uh, it looks a little bit different, but not massively different from this. Got the uh, Sacco side mouldings on this, they came out around 1989. These cars are known for actually having rusty front wings and you can see this one's actually got the bubbling on there, or well, it's not too bad for something that's done well over 100,000 miles. Also got a bit of rust on the on the door, but this car is 30 years old. I mean, it's, it's hardly a surprise in many ways. One of the things you notice straight away with this, in comparison with many other coupes of the time, is just how large it is. One of the main advantages of the C124 is the boot space. Look at that really practical if you just maybe a, two of you and a couple of children it would and you're doing maybe sort of continental trips you could fit all sorts of stuff in here the rear seats don't actually fold unfortunately we can have a look under here pull this up we've actually got a nice full-size spare wheel in there and all the original toolkit there's the warning triangle of course because uh, it's Mercedes of this era. The electric ale, unfortunately, is broken. I can't demonstrate that for you, which is uh, a bit of a shame, but never mind. 
Ooh. And the, uh, <laughs> the boot mechanism is a little bit creaky. The design of this is just ever so classic. I remember when these were very, very cheap. They were maybe £500 for some of these cars. That's not the case anymore. A car like this, this actually has had a few repairs done to it. Um, it actually had an impact just to here. So this headlamp's been replaced on the indicator and the wing's been replaced. You can see it a little bit here. Um, but the, the wing is from a car of the same colour, so the paint match is really, really good. Just that sort of classic Mercedes look about it, which, uh, you know, went through a kind of whole family of them in the 80s and 90s. And uh, a little three-pointed star on a bonnet, so that you know that you're probably the boss of your own business or something like that, or you've uh, reached somewhere high up in life. One thing that's really weird about these uh, W124s, I think I say that for all the uh, cars of this type, is the mirrors. The passenger side mirror is a sort of big square one, and the driver's mirror is a small rectangular one. I absolutely have no idea why that is. The Volkswagen Lupo was similar to that as well. If anybody actually can tell me why they did this, please let me know in the comment section below, because I, I, don't, I don't really know. Got a mono wiper on here. I think it might be a pantograph one. It's going to be a bit difficult for me to film outside because I'm just on my own here today. Um, but uh, yeah, we might see if we can do that from inside. So you've got some nice alloy wheels. This this 220CE is actually not particularly well specified. There was a huge option list of these very expensive cars when they were new, and this car doesn't really have any of the uh, options. You've got the seat belt butler there, who will see come out in a sec. We've also got vacuum operated seats. There's not many electronics in this car. You know, most of the most of the bits are done by sort of vacuum. If that had cruise control it'd be a vacuum system, but of course it doesn't. Somebody was very stingy with the options on the old of this car in 1993. So I've got a cloth interior and no air con. That's pretty easy for coupe to get in and out of this. Unfortunately I've just realised that there's not as much legroom as I thought there would be. That's annoying. Also we'll put the seat belt back properly. We'll have a look at the butler in a second. We've also got these headrests which just should fold down but the switch seems to be broken which is really annoying. Never mind. Ashtray is here some wood. We like a bit of wood, don't we, viewers? A very, very nice, comfy armrest. You don't want to use that there because you might crush some friends here and there. Whoops. Keep knocking the phone with my hand as well, viewers. I do apologise. These little switches on there are for the uh, rear electric windows because you can put all four of these windows down and have a pillarless coupe. The seals, I think, can be a bit of a problem on, on these, though. I'm not touching the sunroof. I would love to have the sunroof open so we can actually have a bit more light in here, but I've heard it's a bit slow, and you know what I'm like, viewers, with sunroofs and older cars. I get a bit funny about them. Big um, armrest in the middle, and a tray for furry dice, which is good, and a little manual there for the 124 series in general. Right, it's time to free myself from my self-imposed prison, I suppose, viewers. So just very basic door cards with the uh, cloth trim, but also with a nice wood strip and mm, soft touch as well. Very nice. As you can see, the indicated wiper stalk is the same thing. It's a very common thing on the older Mercedes. And uh, even to this day, a lot of them are like that. They still have one stalk for both of them. Because often the automatic gearbox lever is on this side. The uh, key goes in there. Come on, autofocus. Come on, there we go. Yeah, key goes in there. This car does not have dual zone climate control. It's just got dual zone heating and ventilation. There is no air conditioning. That was an option. This one has a uh, four-speed auto. I can't remember at all if, if the... C124s in this country came with a manual option 
at all. Certainly the uh, W124s, the normal saloon ones, you could get a manual on certain ones of them, but uh, with this, uh, it's the auto. Got electric mirror switch down here and all the window switches are there. You've even got a remote control for something as well. Got a very useful uh, modern unit for using with Bluetooth and aux in and things like that. Has a one fridge in the middle. See if the glove box. God. I think we're going to have to uh, see if the key needs to go into our glove box for years. Okay, right. See if my secret mission documents go in. Oh, no. Useless. No good for spy work, viewers. You can't have secret mission documents in there. Never mind, I'll have to just put them in here. It's a much better place for them. There we go. So, yes, yeah, got this strange handbrake. You don't need to use it, obviously, all the time because it's an automatic. And we've got the mode selector. We're in E. There's also an S. Um, e, yeah. Um, the car's very slow in E. S is not really sport. I think it's called Standard. Um, this is my best German degree pronunciation there. But yeah, it is very comfortable. This, this annoying seatbelt warning thing here, like it on the older Volvos. Right, let's uh, take a look under the bonnet, shall we? Release is just over there. Let's wait for this helicopter to leave. I do apologize for the wind noise as well, viewers. So we've just got the 2.2 uh, version of the M111 engine under here, as used as well in the first generation C-Class. You can see uh, that there's a lot more room for a bigger engine in here. The W124s actually have ended up to uh, a V8. I think the biggest one was a 5 litre. So plenty of room to put a larger one in. You can see that there's various sort of compartments where they're going to break some things on this side. And over here is the battery. And it's nice to know we've got ABS as well. That would be good because it's a big, heavy car. M111 is a chain driven engine. They do actually sometimes blow head gaskets. I've driven a um, C200 with a blown head gasket before, and that wasn't much fun. But the car was a 1996, so you can really forgive that. This one uh, doesn't need to have any problems, though. Also had a bit of work done on this uh, recently to do with uh, some, um, some sort of rust that's coming underneath. These cars generally are very good in terms of mechanical reliability, but they are very, very old now. There is a list on the Onyx John Classics website uh, that I'll link to in the description below, which gives a you know all the sort of issues that you can have with W124s. I'm not going to go over them here because it would just take me too long. Right, uh, let's go for another drive, shall we, viewers? Lloyd Logan Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. So this car is owned by Matt from the Not A Proper Classic YouTube channel, which is a fantastic name. Having put this car into the standard mode, or S mode, I think it stands for standard rather than sport. It is an awful lot faster than the, the economy mode, or E mode. You can actually feel all 148 eager little German horses. Steering is about as vague as a very vague vlog. That's no surprise really, it's a recirculating ball setup. Now, recirculating ball steering can be very good, but this is, I think the term people used to use is it's a bit sort of woolly. It's, it's not really particularly positive. Now, if you were cruising on the motorway, it would be absolutely fine. In fact, I feel like I want to head down to the south of France in this immediately. It's the sort of car that you imagine that you want to. But if you want to do some very fast driving on country lanes. This probably isn't the car for you. The uh, size of it means that actually it can be a little bit difficult to place at various times. I've just realised actually 
the, the um, funny mirror on the left hand side that is square rather than rectangular does kind of work you can kind of see quite well if you're parking um, you can see the curb reasonably well but yeah if, it's, it's a huge difference if you change um, the transmission into the, uh, the, the ash mode and just I'm just wafting along the ride's very good and you, you do feel like you high up in the world if you're driving around in this and you'd be posing a three-pointed star at the end of the bonnet. I quite enjoyed it viewers. Um, not that that's particularly a surprise, but the older Mercedes seem to do quite well on my channel. I don't know why, so a lot of you seem to like them. And uh, you know, that's, uh, that's absolutely fine. I sort of quite like them too. Anyway, it's uh, time for me to bring this car back to uh, to Matt who owns it and to draw some conclusions about this lovely old Benz. The W124 series of cars had a very long production life of something like 12 years in total. Some of the cabriolets were I think made into 1997, but generally um, they started being replaced by the um, the new E-Class W210 series in 1995. There were so many engine options available that we're just going to focus on the ones that were available in the C124s. The basic one, which came out in 1987, was a 230, a 230CE, um, that was made until 92, but that was a four-cylinder um, M102 engine with 130 horsepower. That was actually replaced um, in 1992 with a 200, which actually had a little bit more power, about 134 horsepower. Um, the 200 CE, which had 16 valves, again, the same sort of engine that um, was in the C class from 1993, that lasted until right at the end of these cars in 1996. In 1993, this engine was made available in the 220 CE, uh, which was made from 93 until 96, although it was renamed the uh, E220 Coupe in 1994. The six cylinder model started with uh, the 300 CE in 1988, but only lasted till about 1990. Um, had an M103 series engine, which developed 188 horsepower. The one though that uh, people might remember is the 300 C24 which went from 1990-1993 and that developed uh, 217 horsepower from an M104 series engine. In 1993 um, that engine was actually replaced with a 3.2 version of the M104 again developing the same about 217 horsepower and the, the 320 CE and later E320 Coupe lasted until 1996. So viewers should you consider a Mercedes-Benz C124 as a sensible second-hand classic. Well, you do have to be aware that these were very expensive cars when they were new, and uh, they do have a reputation for longevity, but because they're so old now, there are likely to be some issues with one of them you pick up for anything under about £3,000. This car has, uh, had some, had some work done to it. I think it was um, bought from an auction for about 2200 something like that. And, um, you know, it's probably worth a bit more now some of these issues have been fixed. They're not particularly fast in this four-cylinder, guys. They're not particularly fast at all, particularly if you go into the economy setting rather than standard. And, uh, you know, they're not actually the most practical, as you've seen. I, I struggle to actually fit in the back. But they have this sort of charm about them. I can see why so many people bring these to classic car shows because they are definitely classics. The way that they look, the sound of the engineering is just absolutely timeless. And I'm very grateful to have had a go with this. Thank you again to Matt for letting me use his pride and joy today. Anyway, thank you so much you once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more reasonably priced nostalgic motoring.